All right, so that's we'll move on to our first stage, and that's going to be the painting. Now, instead of painting a foot by foot uh, water tile, which is just water, you know, you're not going to see the whole process. What I've decided to do is paint a transition piece, one of the six by twelves, and uh, take you through that step by step. That way, you can see both the water aspect and the earth aspect of it. So, step number one is making sure we get our all important transition aspects, uh, our measurements correct, so that we get the uh, the three by three, so that these tiles will go together. Uh, I'm going to do one that's a little different. I'm not going to have it the water coming in here and here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a piece that is going to be more like this. It's actually going to be this piece's opposite number. Uh, you've got the three inch there and there. So this is water. This is going to be used as a corner piece where you can have water here and coming up here. So I'm going to do the opposite of this. I'm going to have the earth come on this side and the water there. What we need to do for that is measure our three inches along this side and mark it. And then we need a three inch edge along this side. So we're just going to put that down there and mark it. Now once you've got these marked, that's really all you need to do. You don't need to put anything else on here. Uh, you just need to know where to stop the earth paint, stop the water paint. However, I like to think of it a little bit more than that, and so I'm going to draw where I'm going to paint the entire uh, border between the water and the, the earth on it. You don't have to do that. You can just make it up as you go along. I'm not much for improvisation when it comes to my terrain, though, so we're just going to have it come out here and go like that. So water, earth. Let's get started. We'll just take some of our blue acrylic, give it a little bit of a shake here, just because it's been sitting for a while. Pour some out into our palette. And you're also going to want to get the edges. So we'll just start off with that. You want that to be a solid blue. And what I do is I go around and do this edge as well, where the transition piece is. Don't worry if it's not perfectly straight. Uh, gotta remember, it's not like beaches are perfectly formed. There's transition. And when you paint the blue out into the main body of water, always go in one direction. Uh, I go in one direction on all my tiles and that is from left to right upwards and why you do that is because when you lay the tiles down on the table the brush strokes if you wiggle them around a bit you know swirl them a bit it gives some semblance of actual currents of water. If you have them going in different directions on the same tile people will notice and if you have them going in different directions from tile to tile, it'll look like your water is colliding in unusual currents uh, when they, where the seams are between tiles. And it'll also make your tiles stand out more because it'll give a focal point for the eye to spot where the tiles meet. So, very important, you always go in the same direction. I'm going over my pencil a little bit here. But that doesn't really matter as long as I can keep to the rough shape that I wanted and I meet my 3 inch mark. Okay? So I'm just going to brush that out a bit to make sure there's no sections that are pooling. Uh, when I'm doing the edges, I'm using short little strokes, which is why there's some pooling. But when I am doing the main part of the water, what you'll want to do is, oh, there, just get this edge. What you'll want to do is do long strokes. The reason, again, if you keep going like that, see, uh, I did it with a little bit of paint so that you can see it better here. But you get brush, brush, brush. That's going to show up. What you're going to want to do is strokes as long as you can 
to get, again, the semblance of water. Give it a little squiggle. The inking stage will help with that a lot as well. It'll help move some of the blue paint around. Even though it's dried, uh, the acrylic paint becomes somewhat malleable again uh, with the ink mix, which is just the black acrylic paint and water. So that will allow you to touch up any issues you may have had with your supposed water currents. So there's our edging done. And I'm just going to finish this up. And once I'm done there, with the blue, we'll move on to the brown. So, I also chose these tiles because they're small and they don't take as long to do. Because really, do you need to sit here and watch me paint an entire square foot of blue? I don't think so. But, normally I would think that I would cut out here. And by normally, I mean supposedly, because this is my first video, so I can't really say what's going to be normal, but it would make sense not to make you sit here and watch me paint the entire thing, but we've got another coat to do in the brown, so I'll just finish this off real quick. Take it back to long strokes again, as I said. Just pull that out so that... I'm using the short strokes just to finish that off, but then I'm going to go over it again in the long strokes just to get that look of water. And I feel like I should have a really big afro right now and say, look, we're just going to add some clouds. We're just going to add some clouds, add some mountains. But we're just going to add some earth. So, clean off our brush. Fantastic. And now on the other side of our palette, we're going to take some of this brown acrylic. And I have the massive brown acrylic as opposed to the small blue is because I use this brown for a lot of my terrain basing. So I go through it pretty quickly. And it's a good buy because you get twice as much as in these tiny ones, but without twice the cost. All right. So now... Just clean off our brush a little bit more. Get some more of that blue out. You really have to uh, make sure you get all the water out with these plastic brushes. They retain the water quite a lot. Um, normally I would take this over to a sink and just blast it, but that would take more time. So with the earth, I'm just going to start with the edging again. Just go over that. Again, it doesn't really matter if it's rough. You might have some uh, some white poke out. Just go over that. If you have some spot, tiny spots that you miss, just keep in mind that you're going to be inking this later, so that doesn't really matter. You'll get it. So we just do our edges first. You can go over the blue a little bit if you need to. If you're worried about your transition, uh, do not go over the blue on the edges though where you have your three inch mark. Uh, you want to get that as close as possible. A little bit of variance isn't going to make that much of a difference when you put your tiles together, but the more variance you have, the worse it's going to look. So the brown, a lot easier to do. Now I'm just painting this on to show what happens if you don't, if you don't want to put sand on here, you can just paint it brown. Um, for my purposes, how I build my terrain, there's actually a step I do before this, and that I sand it and then paint it brown. Um, but so that I can show you both this way and that way, I'm going to paint this brown first, and then sand it and then paint it again. And I'll explain why. So just covering my bases with a single tile instead of making you sit through watching me paint this twice which could be quite boring I imagine okay so there's our top and as I said normally I would paint this later so I'm gonna get a little bit of blue on my fingers from picking this up 
And we're just going to paint our brown edge. Got a little bit of white there we'll take care of. Okay, so really, there we go. Blue for water, brown for earth. If you just want something simple, this will do it. This could be your water tile. You want a flat surface so it doesn't interfere with your miniatures at all. You just want to represent the ground and the water. That's all you need. Okay, you just need the blue and the brown. We, however, are not going to be satisfied that. We want the whole thing. So, we're going to let this dry and then I'm going to move on to showing you how to mix the sand cement and put on the uh, the raised portions that are going to be our white caps as well as the raised portions that are going to represent some kind of variance on the earth side whether it's a little bit of hill you can put tiny ones on or you know whatever you want to just make the surface pop out of the the tile so let's just let this dry we'll come back and move on to the next step